You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody, and happy Freaker Friday. This is Grammy Mary, your hostess with the mostest weirdness. <laughs> well, I may not have the mostest, but I got an awful lot of muchness. So, we'll just leave it at that. And welcome to the parade. Yes, we have a lovely parade going on. Look over here at the float, the guy that's got the windows that are so covered with stickers and all this other BS that, yeah, he drove that thing around and he personally delivered because he's a stage. He's a stage. Yes. Well, okay, he's a goofball on a stage or perhaps he's just the one that let me pull a rabbit out of my hat oh look who gets to be the sucker for this one yes it's a lovely parade with all kinds of floats and look off to the side somebody's selling popcorn Ooh, and some adult beverages too or if not adult beverages at least selling soda pop which is just as bad for you by the way also looky here here comes the baton twirlers on cnn they're twirling their batons and telling you look at me look at me we know what's going on yeah ain't it great i'm pretty damn sick of all this shit pretty sick of all of it it's like all right guys how freaking you know i sit there and i look at that stuff and i think how stupid seriously zappa had it nailed Hydrogen is not the most plentiful element in the universe. Stupidity is. And there's an awful lot of people exercising it right now with all of this. He must have done it. He's a bad guy. We need to do, we need to do really seriously whatever happened to innocent until proven guilty. Oh, that's right. Yeah. The court of social media has, has passed down its ruling. This guy needs to be flamed. Yeah. It's going to be one of those nights. Just saying. Grammy's got her knickers in or not. Yeah. But I do have ham and beans going on the stove. So, yeah, I'm going to have plenty of fuel for the rocket chair. (laughs) Too bad I haven't had it prior to. But that's okay. It's like, oh, my Lord, people. Let's watch the clowns. Look, there's some monkeys, too. Yeah, ain't it great? No, it's not. It's just freaking stupid. (sighs) <sighs> false flag, false flag. Oh, well. Over here on Twitter, thank you, Barman, for tweeting me out. I truly do appreciate it, hon. Letting everybody know that I am here on RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 10. Also on the RLM Spreaker channel. And uh, if you are listening in on the Spreaker channel, come on over to RealLibertyMedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the chat. Give me some static because my internet sucks. And, yeah, I can't keep that many chats going. And those guys, yeah, they give me shit, and I give it back. Because, you know, EPA permits and all that fun stuff. I just ain't going through all that paperwork. I'm just not doing it. In any case, that was Twitter, and I lost another stalker. Oh, darn. Uh, It was probably Cesar uh, Sayoc. Is that how you say that? Yeah, he's not stalking me anymore because apparently his name got pulled out of the hat. And he's the one that gets to be the one going down for somebody else's. Be afraid. I'm your boogeyman. That's what I am. I will do whatever I can to get away with scaring you. You foiled my plan. Yeah. <laughs> Assholios. I'm mm, rare form. Did you see that? <laughs> Went by really fast. I I did catch a nap. <laughs> That's probably why I'm like this. I got about a half hour nap in this afternoon after working at my uncle's and before this. And it's like, yeah, I'm, it's going to be a good one or not. Um, Let's see. 
Republicans before the rally, Democrats before a rally. Yeah. Mm, yeah. No, this hunt. Oh, wow. Carpe donctum. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Wow. I know. The FBI said. They said. And therefore, it must be. It must be true. The Fibbing Bureau of um, Incarceration. No, that's not a good one. The, the Fibbing Bureau of um, Imbeciles. There you go. <laughs> Ooh, it is spy versus spy. It really is. That's a good one, Roms. <laughs> I like the way that is. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, so let's see. Where else was I at? I need to go check out this effing site. I was able to get on the effing site. You know, my computer was being a poo poo head this morning. It's been doing that off and on lately, and so therefore I am going to contact my friendly neighborhood computer guy and uh, have him wake it over. But I'm hoping I can milk it at least through Halloween, you know, because I don't think it'll take him all that long, really, because, you know, he's like super amazing. And I hope it doesn't because he charges. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you you get what you pay for. But in any case, um, <coughs> excuse me, my computer was being the shits. But then when it finally did decide to boot up properly and all that fun stuff, I was able to access Effin again. So yay, over here on Freedom's Network. Booyah, I see Cowboy Tech was posting things earlier, as well as KD Troxel. KD was posting all kind of stuff. Bob Renner is just going absolutely nut job posting stuff over there. Not that Bob is a nut job, because... Unless, well, okay. Um, I know how to recognize that because I see one in the mirror every morning when I look. Not that I look every morning because sometimes it's like, no, I just ain't going there. But, uh, yeah. Grimner's also over here. Yay. Yeah. Can I talk faster? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I just popped some speed and you know I haven't done that since like senior year of high school because that stuff just does not do well with me mm, I bounce off I literally literally bounce off ceilings so I don't go there and I feel like that's what I've done that power nap really was a power nap <laughs> In any case, hey there, everybody over here on Freedoms Network. I'm so glad I have access to you again because this is where I'm going to be posting my links tonight. And uh, I can do the fun little emoticons because, yeah, Freedoms Network's got way more fun emoticons than, than realliberty.org. Although I do love realliberty.org because it's got lots of way cool people. So does FN, but FN's got better emoticons. Donna Van Meter, wait a minute, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, I see her on here, let me, I'm gonna, Donna, I'm gonna friend you, yay, hey woman, welcome to realliberty.org, we also have Grimner over here, thank you Grim for sharing it out, letting everybody know that I am on now, Rob Works is also here, as well as the lovely Terry Sanders, and the lovely Moose Girl, and uh, Java, 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 Java Doctor is also logged in, as well as Bob Renner. I saw that Flash somebody just went to bed, because it's dark 30 over there in Denmark, so yeah. I don't blame you, Flasher. Listen later, it's okay. But give that lovely lady a hug, will ya? Um, Caesar Psyop? Oh, you know, that could very well be. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> yes, the programming is still working. Why do you think they keep doing it? Because nobody, f nobody realizes you're falling for the bullshit again. Would you step away from the propaganda trough and stop drinking the fool aid? You're swilling that shit down. Stop it. Just walk away. Bad juju. Empty calories. That's all it is. Um, ooh, ooh, he was at a Trump rally. Oh, as if, as if they can't, you know, do a little bit of creative editing and just pop him right in there. I've seen green, green stuff before. And, you know, it's pretty freaking amazing. That's like every time I see something, I'm, I'm to the point now where even when I see a video that I agree with, I think, did they green screen that one? Is this controlled opposition? I'm I'm starting to my tinfoil hat's getting a little bit snug. Yay! 
TD says that this site works out better for her than the other one does. Um, what? Okay. TD just shared a link over here on realliberty.org. Now, I'm going to keep moving along because I keep squirreling. Squirrely. Hi, Paul Atred Atreides. Paul Atreides. Hi, Paul. How are you? Over here on Minds. And anybody else that's over here on Minds, did you know you should never confuse education with intelligence? Never. Because I know an awful lot of very educated idiots. And I know an awful lot of people that you know, didn't get much schooling, much book learning. And they're some of the smartest people I know. So, yeah. Education don't necessarily mean intelligence. Just putting that out there. Okay, over here on Fakie Book. I know my brother Fudd was playing around for a while. Um, <laughs> and my baby, my daughter is uh, Sharon. Oh, hey. <laughs> I like that t-shirt. Don't be a pecker. Mm, that's a funny one. Okay. My daughter has a t-shirt business, by the way. It's... Uh, Willy Nilly Tees, and I think it's, I don't remember if it's willy, willy nilly tees net or I, mm, I'll have to look again. She makes some really fun t-shirts, so, and she's doing more and more and more and more. So, yeah, if you go there, check it out, buy a shirt, support my daughter, so I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, her husband has to, but, you know, it, I had to throw that in there, just milk it, milk it. Milk it. Kind of like that smart ass remark I made earlier that everybody just kind of went, Yeah, it's just Grammy. It, it's just, she's off her meds again. Where I said, Yeah, I see all this shit and I keep thinking, God, y'all are being a bunch of moobs. And you know why you're being a bunch of moobs? Because moobs are like boobs only without substance. Well, and they're on a guy too and they tend to be furrier. Not that they are. Moving along. <laughs> I suppose I've made it through all of the different sites that I need to make it to. I think that means it's time for me to say hey to everybody over here in the chat. Chat, 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 chat. Oh, and Miss Kate beat me to the duck. That's okay. That's okay. Um, dun, dun, dun. Okay, so I had to have a swill of coffee. <clears throat> As if I need something to charge me even more. <laughs> Over here in the RLM chat, right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Grimner, who is the RLM god, don't you know, and the lovely Moose Girl. And you know what? Grim and Moose are going to be on later on this evening for the Freakers Ball, so be sure to stick around. Good time will be had by all. Uh, the lovely Kate is also here from Florida. And you know what, Miss Kate? I'm hearing some not such pleasant things coming out of Florida. Maybe that wasn't necessarily the smartest move in the world to go down there. Them people down there is crazy, girlfriend. You watch out for yourself. Because, wow. Uh, what's that? Hmm? Yee hoo ha. What are you talking about? Am I right? What's that, Gooberzilla? Let me check this shit. Oh, holy crap. Thanks. Who's that? Oh. Eh. Hmm. Eh. Uh, moving along. Romes. It's Romes. Not Darth Romes. Just Romes. But that's okay. Because he's not feeling quite Halloweenish yet. But I am. I also see Asmo is here. Hey, Asmo, how you doing, hun? Oh, now we have trust no one in here as well. Yeah, very good advice. Trust no one, not even yourself, because sometimes you'll think, I agree with that, and then you're getting bamboozled. I also see Chalcedoni is in the chat. Hey, Chalcedoni, ain't seen you chit-chat for a while. Of course, I haven't a whole lot lately either. Uh, pot calling the kettle black. The lovely Cycles is still logged in. Hey, Cycles. And Chloe is also here, as well as Cyborg Noodle. And it is the Pastafarian Holy Day, so may you be touched by his Cyborgian noodliness. Uh, D underscore C is also logged in, as well as Echelon and Gooberzilla. You know what, Goob? I watched a video earlier today, and if it wasn't for all of the 
the biblical not and I'm not saying cuz biblical references I don't have a problem with it's it's the people that thump it I they get they wear on my nerves after a while but he he showed he had an awful lot of really really interesting things that he pointed out and I'm going to have to I'm going to have to go back in my history and and share that to you cuz I think you'll find it fascinating hun about space and and the firmament and yeah I thought it was pretty fascinating. Open oh, rooms just pinged out. Ding! Funny, I didn't hear that. I'm here, as well as I be Don C. And looky there, Meister Bra. Hi, Woody. How's things going in your neck of the woods? I also see a double dose of poxify or pox going on with poxified and poxophone. We also have some pompa pompa pon sauce in the house, as well as the lovely rain. And looky there, RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. Now, I think we need to have at least a millisecond of silence. Okay, that was enough. Rob Works is out of fuel for his bubbler. Can we, can we have a... Dude! <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> we need the bubbler. Oh, well. But tomorrow, things could be brighter. I also see Skittle, the F-Bominator bot, is also in the chat, as well as Trust No One. Looky there, the Phantom is also here, as well as Colfax 101. And looky there, Frumpy is also here. And I'm dressed rather frumpy because I was cleaning most of the day, so frumpy. Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is also in the house, as well as JJ's, no, 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 JJ's, that Scottish feller, and Kozu, and moi, 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 moi. That's the one that, that Flash doesn't like. It makes him nervous when I say that. Um, Yeah, I know, Goobs. They're all ba basically, you know, from um, astrological, or, yeah observations. Yeah, is that what I want to say? Yeah. Or astronomic observations, however you wish to look at it. But he really raised some very interesting points. So, yeah. I'd, I'll have to share that for you later. And, you know what? Round out the crew. The one, the only, the sock puppet. I wonder how Sock's going to dress up for Halloween. Is he going to dress up like a sock puppet? <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> That could be funny. I'm going to see pictures. That's all I got to say about that. And Beetle's gone. Beetle's gone. What the hey? Oh, oh, what we know about suspected mail bomber Cesar Sayoc. Oh, you know, when it all comes out, as if it ever will, and people find out that they not only have mud all over their face because they got into the mud slicking fight as well as everyone else, but they also consumed multiple tons of uh, propaganda shite. Yeah. It's just crazy. Uh, da -da -da -da. Whatever, whatever. Oh, and now trust no one is Rome's again. He's a Roman trusty, untrusting feller. Okay, come on, Twitter, refresh, because I'm sick of seeing that, that dude. Seriously. I'm tired of hearing it, basically, is what it is. So I need to quit talking about it, don't I? But, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see, where do I want to go? Yeah, I think I'll just go to this one because I'm going to go ahead and just get this shit out of the road right off the bat. This is from truepundit.com. Bombs were meant to get attention and strike fear. That's what an explosives expert said. Mm-hmm. So whoever sent suspicious packages containing bombs to several prominent Democrats and CNN's New York Bureau likely designed them to get attention to be caught and to strike fear into the intended recipients. Now, uh, Representative Rick Crawford, who's a Republican from Arkansas, said this on Fox News in the Ingram Angle on Wednesday. 
Now, I think it was probably designed to get attention. It was designed to be caught, and while it may be a device that could function, I think it was designed more than anything to strike fear in the hearts of people that they were intended to target, not necessarily to kill them. Honest, Ossifer, I really didn't mean to do that, but, you know, they pissed me off, so I thought, I scared the ass. Well... That's according to Crawford, who is a former bomb disposal technician with the U.S. Army. Crawford told Fox News host Laura Ingram that this is a contemptible act, regardless of who the perpetrator is. And the congressman noted that the good news is that U.S. officials have a huge database at their disposal. Maybe I should say huge instead of huge and they're going to investigate the suspicious packages and identify the one or more culprits. Oh, there is a plethora of culprits to this. I think spin the wheel of fortune and just poke your finger at a picture. Don't touch it, though. Just poke at it. Because if you touch it, you might catch something. Them people's nasty. Now... <clears throat> goes on to say, I will say this. As a former bomb tech, I know what the reporting protocols are. And I know that the FBI has a, a great expertise in intelligence community. It has great expertise in being able to go after and exploit that intelligence and find out who these people are. Ooh, it's the Fibber McGee's of the, of the government. Oh, hey, the whole thing was on Life Z. No thanks. So how does that... <laughs> okay. Oh, this one's even more in depth. Yay. Um, from lifezet.com, it says that former presidents Dangleberry and Slick Willie, former Secretary of State Schittlery, former Attorney General Eric Holden himself, former CIA Director Brennan, Brennan, and other demon crappics reportedly were sent suspicious packages. Now, the package addressed to Brennan was sent to the Time Warner Center in uh, Manhattan, which prompted CNN's New York Bureau, um, housed within the building, to evacuate. Run away! Run away! Yeah, because you guys are so brave. When you don't have the green screen to do all your fun stuff in front of. Apparently, Representative Maxine Wa Waters, who fielded bipartisan backlash this summer from her repeated calls to harass Trumple-Stilskin administration officials, was also sent a suspicious package. Wow, they're really starting to get creepy, you know, aren't they? She insisted in a statement, however, that I unequivocally condemn any and all acts of violence and terror. So you say when you're on the receiving end, biot. Now, Crawford told Fox News host, yada, yada, yada. Okay, I already read that part. Oh, so they did a big cut and paste kind of thing. Huge database. Okay. Now, for his own part, let's see, yeah. For his own part, Trumple Stilskin tr strongly condemned the person or persons responsible for sending the bombs to CNN and prominent Democrats saying during a press conference on Wednesday that the full weight of the government is being deployed to conduct this investigation and bring those responsible for these despicable acts to justice. We will spare no resources or expense in this effort. The full weight. Holy smokes. You know, that's like beating the shit out of someone and, and by the time you're done, you just got this transparent skin left. Because, yeah, the full weight of the government, that's, that's, that's the big old honker elephant in the room, ain't it? Yes, I see all kind of flashing. Um, I know, it would be so fun if Haraldo was doing it, wouldn't it? <laughs> huh. Oh, you guys are having way fun over here in the chat. Okay. Now, to carry on with this, we have to unify. We have to come together.
Trump insisted. Acts or threats of political violence of any kind have no place in the United States of America. Yeah, we do that other places because they have people that we don't like that won't give us what we want. So we want to go over and just bomb the shit out of them and then take it. Oh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. Now, in 2016, Democratic presidential nominee Shitlery Clinton, I mean Hillary, I mean, no, I meant Shitlery. One of the suspicious packages intended recipients said Wednesday that it's a time of deep divisions and we have to do everything we can to bring our country together. Sure you say that, darling, when you get one. Not so fun when you're on the receiving end, is it? We also have to elect candidates who will try to do the same. <laughs> As if that does any good. You guys, I'm, I'm over that. I'm way beyond that part. That doesn't do any good. Apparently, Shitlery's comments on national civility after being sent the package are markedly different from the remarks she made just several days ago to CNN's Christiana Amanpour. Yeah... You cannot be civil with a political party that wants to destroy what you stand for, what you care about. That's what she said at the time. Well, you know, uh, back at you, hun. Look in a mirror. Just saying. Now, former Secret Service agent Dan Bonjo told Ingram that there's no place for this and that clip you played of Hillary sums it all up. Just a week ago, she was talking about uncivil treatment of Republicans being almost mandatory. And now, all of a sudden, she's the peacemaker? <laughs> yeah, because her life flashed before her eyes. Although it's not really her life, because I don't think that's the real shit, Larry. I think that critter died before the presidential election. And this is just a double, because, you know, they got a few extras. It's like multiplicity, and they get dumber with each copy. <laughs> Seriously, they do. Now, Bongio, Bongino denounced the mainstream media coverage following the bomb thro threats, noting that many reporters and pundits tried to tie Trump and his tough rhetoric against the fake news media to the threats, pinning the blame on him. Well, you know, they are playing pin the tail on the donkey. Or jackass, however you want to say that. It's gross, it's disgusting, and as a matter of fact, I remember doing commentary on this network during the really horrific shooting in the baseball field. He said, referring to the June 2017 congressional baseball shooting, targeting bloodlikens, and the shooter, a liberal activist who uh, was a supporter of Bernie Sanders, critically shot and wounded House Majority Whip Steve Scalise. They have whips in the house. It's no wonder all the crap coming out of the D.C. area is pretty freaking messed up. Them peeps kinky. All them whips and shit going on. Every commentator on this network in brackets was going out of their way to make sure me included, by the way, that the person who did that, Bernie Sanders, although he was a supporter of Sanders, had no responsibility for that whatsoever. So, okay, the person that did it carried the responsibility. Bernie, no, just because that guy happened to like Bernie's flavor of BS doesn't mean that Bernie was the one that set, put him up for it. Because really seriously, could you see Bernie? Nah, <laughs> yeah. Now, that person was responsible for his own actions. Yes, that person was. If you do something, you are responsible for what you do. It doesn't make shit but a difference how many people told you to do it or told you not to do it. You made choice to do it. To go on, he says, yet we have irresponsible gross coverage out there, people jumping to conclusions, claiming that they have some kind of inside information about a motive and some kind of link to Donald Trump. Sure, they have inside information. It's coming from inside their own heads. They're making this shit up as they go along. And by golly, this guy's guilty and he's linked to Trump because it's in their head, the happy little placard guy walking across their... Behind their eyes, he's saying, Trump did it, Trump did it. And they're going, yeah, yes, master, yes. 
And yes, it is really grotesque and disgusting and sickening. And I'm tired of all of these other people jumping on the bandwagon and going, Yes, master. Feed me more propaganda shit. <sighs> yeah, the POTUS can do no right. And they can do no wrong. And yada, 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 yada. And that's about all there is to my song. It sucks. It all sucks. Rob Work said it best. They all suck. <laughs> did I? Oh. You pronounce his name Bungholio? I am sorry, Grim. I did that wrong. Mm, my bad. Well. Well. Oh, Bitcoin will be 10 years old on the 31st. Wow, happy birthday, Bitcoin. Oh, uh, you know, the only kind of bombs I want to drop are truth bombs and love bombs. I love you, but it don't mean I have to like you. So let me drop a truth bomb on your ass and see how you like that. Ooh, wee, 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 wee. All the way back to your cognitive dissonance. You just run away. I know the truth is a scary monster for some people. But, you know, we're coming up on Halloween, so let's talk monsters, shall we? Speaking of monsters, I have a kitty cat getting ready to jump in my lap again. She's crazy. She's crazy, I tell you. Okay, let me put this over on the effing side. Dun, dun, dun. True pundit, honey. I, I thank you for the heads up, but I don't know. I get very, I just don't like it when, when other sites take another site stuff and, and creatively edit, crop and all that fun stuff, and then go read more. And then it it's like, either post the whole damn thing or don't freaking bother. Or at least do the link to it and say, guess what? If you want to check this shit out, here, go check this out. Okay, mm. yeah, brings a whole new meaning to stay away from the guy in the white van too, though. Ouch, key cat. Okay, I love the emoticons over here on the effing site. Rally, I do. Okay, since I did that one, let's go to this other one because this is from the Onion, and the Onion is always true. My key cat is loving me, but she's not retracting claws, and that's not fun. Okay, so from the onion.com, FBI declassifies J. Edgar Hoover's extensive file on the Munster family. Oh, maybe they're at fault. Well, isn't it Ted Cruz that looks like Grandpa Munster? In any case, unsealing the dossier after nearly 50 years, the Federal Bureau of Investigation declassified former Director J. Edgar Hoover's extensive file on the Munster family. That sources confirmed that on Monday. These 3,600 documents reveal that the California Munster family were of significant interest to J. Edgar Hoover during his extrajudicial intelligence gathering campaigns. That's from Andrew Jewett who's an American history professor at Harvard, don't you know? Adding that from 1964 to 1966, the FBI chief had obtained numerous tapes of the Munsters and instructed federal agents to transcribe all conversations of the 1313 Mockingbird Lane residents. According to multiple letters to officials, Hoover suspected that the Munster family patriarch, Vladimir Dracula, or Grandpa, was a communist working in his dungeon laboratory to develop chemical weapons to use on American soldiers and civilians. Ooh, I could believe that. He was also convinced that they were using the tower of Munster Mansion to send coded messages to either the Soviets or radical dissident political groups. Several documents also reportedly showed that Hoover had directed FBI agents to follow the Munster coach and recruit niece Marilyn Munster as an informant. You know why he wanted to recruit Marilyn, don't you? Because she's a snappy dresser and he thought, I want to find out where she buys her dresses. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Jay Edgar, you're such a funny fella. Uh, fake bombs, fake bombs. Well, you know what, Rob? It's no different than the fake news. I mean, you may as well, if you're going to be doing fake news and really working it into a frenzy like it's obviously working, then uh, why not do fake bombs as well? You know, that way you don't really have to go to any effort whatsoever. Ay. Ay. Okay. Put this over here on the effing site. And those of you listening over on realliberty.org, I will post them over there as well, but it just posts so much faster over here on the effing site where I can just do little emoticons. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I am so glad those things are declassified, though. I always thought there was something rather fishy about Grandpa Munster. Hmm. Okay. So. Uh, I'm not going there now. I was going to go to that free North Carolina one, but nah. Not going there now. Uh, I'm tired of it. Uh, dun, dun, where did I, I have something else too that I pulled up, or maybe I don't. Maybe I just thought I did. Maybe I put it in my pocket already. Hey, maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, I know, here we go. Here we go. You know, my uh, nephew posted this in our family page over on Fakie Book, and I saw the discussion earlier today in the chat about how many people have abandoned Fakie Book, and I'm almost there, almost there. You know, if it wasn't for some family issues that I need to be able to stay up to date with, and those family pages, that's pretty much where, yeah. So, <clears throat> this is from WSMV.com, News 4. Man sets parents' house on fire after using blowtorch to kill spiders. That would have been something my youngest would have done. Seriously. Apparently, a California man accidentally set his parents' house on fire while trying to exterminate black widows with a blowtorch. Didn't work out too well. The 23-year-old man called firefighters Tuesday night after he saw smoke coming from the attic while house-sitting for his parents. Now, he told the fire crew that he used a blowtorch to kill the spiders and eliminate their webs from the bricks on the home's exterior. And Captain Robert Castillo of the Fresno Fire Department said one of the bricks had a small crack. So the blowtorch's flame ignited flammable material inside. More than two dozen firefighters responded to the blaze, which caused an estimated $10,000 in damage. Okay, in California, $10,000 worth of damage, that's, a, that's some melted siding. Goes on to say, thankfully the man made it out safely and no one was injured. Well, it looks like a little bit more than $10,000 worth of damage to me, but eh, firefighters really don't know the cost of this shit. In any case, yeah, so let this be a lesson to you. Sometimes blow torches are not necessarily a good thing to use when dealing with spiders. Just saying. I have an attack kitty and shoes <laughs> and rolled up newspapers that I use. So, unless they're close to the door and then I get the broom and I sweep them outside. But, yeah. If they're not close to a doorway, they get squished or they get attacked by the kitty cat. One of the two. So, back to my pocket I go. Yeah, that was not necessarily brilliance on their part. So, and you know what? I really didn't stick a whole hell of a lot into my pocket. I did put something in there about Windows 10 being the worst version ever. <laughs> you think? You think? But, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much a given for most of us. Uh, whoa, okay. Um, 
looking at some things in the recommended. And I think what I will do first is I will go to one that the lovely Miss Terry shared over on realliberty.org because I'm wanting to do something that's, yeah, happy and healthy. This is from futurism.com. Um, we aren't growing enough healthy food to feed everyone on Earth. Now, I, I, mm, okay, if you consider everything that's sprayed with pesticides and herbicides and all that other fun shit, then yeah, I would agree with that. But there's an awful lot of food that goes to waste as well. So the agriculture industry needs to get its priorities straight. According to a newly published study, the world food system is producing too many unhealthy foods and not enough healthy ones. We simply can't uh, all adopt the healthy diet under the current global agriculture st system, said study co-author Evan Fraser in the press release. The results show that the global system currently overproduces grains, fats, and sugars, while production of fruits and vegetables, and to a smaller degree, protein, is not sufficient to meet the nutritional needs of the current population. So, for their study, published Tuesday in the journal PLOS One, researchers from the University of Gulf compared global agricultural production with consumption recommendations from Harvard University's Healthy Eating Plate Guide. Hmm. Now their findings were stark. The agriculture industry's overall output of healthy foods does not match humanity's needs. I think maybe humanity needs to learn to grow their own food, but then again, you get all these massive metropolitan areas where nobody's got a little plot to grow their own food. And I think that's part of the plot as well. Now, instead of the recommended eight servings of grains per person, um, it produces 12. And while nutritionists recommend that we each consume 15 servings of fruits and vegetables daily, the industry produces just five. The mismatch continues for oils and fats. Three servings instead of one, and protein, which is three servings instead of five, and sugar, which is four servings when we don't need any. Uh, the researchers don't just point out the problem, though. They also calculate what it would take to address the lack of healthy food, excuse me, while also helping the environment. So for a growing population, our calculations suggest that the only way to eat nu a nutritionally balanced diet, save land, and reduce greenhouse gas is to consume and produce more fruits and vegetables, as well as transition to diets higher in plant-based protein. Mm. Greenhouse gases. You know, that's all that methane coming out of them pigs and cows' butts. But and, and people in D.C.'s mouths. But I digress. Now, the number of companies dedicated to making plant-based proteins mainstream are already gaining traction. But unfortunately, it's unlikely that the agriculture industry will decide to prioritize growing fruits and veggies over less healthy options as long as people prefer having the latter on their plates. Well, I, I, I am not necessarily a really big meat eater, but I do like to have some meat on my plate. Now, there are lots of times where I fix things where I don't have an awful lot of meat in the meal, but I, then it's like beans and potatoes and and other filling things. So now if you wish to read more about this, you can read it at Not Enough Fruits, Vegetables Grown to Feed the Planet, U of G study reveals, and there is a link there. And um, for more on food scarcity, there is also a link to to feed a hungry planet. We're all going to need to eat less meat. I think we need to basically stop with these massive, massive, you know, in-house production of meat. You know, where the critters don't get to see any daylight whatsoever. They're just kind of stuck in this great big Quonset 
kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, now, see, Vinny, or not Vinny, Grimmy, I kind of, di I didn't mind Windows Vista. Windows ME sucked, yes. My favorite, though, so far, has, I mean, I liked Windows 98 and Windows XP, but I like Windows 7. Windows 7 is, that's and that's what I got on this computer, and I really like Windows 7. Vista, mm, that was very short-lived, but I didn't really have a problem with Vista. But, <coughs> I had, I actually, it's this, com is it this computer? No, it's my old computer that the ex got in the divorce. <laughs> he got that one because it had all of the pictures loaded on it, and I had to put them on a flash drive. But um, that one started out as a Windows Vista, and then as soon as I got it, upgraded it to Windows 7. So, you know, I really didn't play with Vista a whole heck of a lot at home anyway. But, yeah, I'm thinking Windows 10 is not necessarily a hit-one-out-of-the-park kind of program, especially all the dinking and dotching that they do with it. It's like, y'all just quit poking, quit, and, you know, just in case you're curious, Windows, I have had my uh, Windows updates turned off for quite some time, because I don't trust y'all, because I want to keep my Windows 7, so stay away from my computer. It's running just, well, for the most part, just fine. So... Eat healthy people, grow your own food, that way you know how healthy it is. Also keep in mind that the water supply that you are using is a large percentage of the nutritional value of whatever it is that you're eating. So if there's a lot of nasty ass chemicals in your water supply, that's all going to be going into whatever you grow as well. Just saying. Okay, so let me... Let me do this one, and I think, where's the, where's the guy that's chewing? Nom, 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 nom. There he is. Yay! I just love these emoticons. Okay. <laughs> Back to my pocket I go. Now, um... Oh, I want to check this one out just simply because um, I do have a crickety knee. <laughs> so I'm going to check this one out. Thank you, Pocket, for recommending it. It's from Bloomberg.com. Not that I want to have any kind of surgery, but... <clears throat> this implant helps heal knees with the patient's own cartilage. Mmm, very interesting. Now, at first, Courtney Manino blamed the dull ache in her left knee on a ligament that she tore in high school. She ignored it as long as she could, but she had to cut her four-mile runs in half and then to zero when the pain wouldn't let up. Soon, the young doctor cringed at the thought of even navigating some stairs to get to work. The diagnosis was unlucky. Cartilage damage too severe to be treated with cortisone shots and over-the-counter painkillers, which basically do not repair the cartilage. All they do is just make it to where it's not quite so painful to move until you decide to have knee replacement. Oh, apparently they say it was not severe enough yet to justify the kind of knee replacement surgery reserved for patients with advanced arthritis and yada, 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 especially since she's only 29. Now, with few choices, the Cedars-Sinai pediatrician decided to try a first-of-its-kind treatment from biotech company Vericell Corp., which specializes in tissue engineering by employing the sort of medical scaffolding made of collagen. Now, Vericell takes some of the patient's own cartilage cells, multiplies them in a Petri dish, and inserts the new crop back into the damaged knee. About a year later, um, Man Manino says that the improvement has been dramatic, and she can handle stairs, a bike, and at the gym, an elliptical machine. 
It's not perfect yet, she says, but my pain is so much better. How awesome. And you know what? If you start before it gets to that point, there are things that you can consume in nature that help with those. They won't cure it, you know, but they will help your body repair itself because that's what the body's intended to do. Now, apparently her procedure may seem a little weird because first doctors perform a biopsy to remove a tic-tac-sized piece of the patient's healthy knee cartilage. Next, technicians at the company's Cambridge Mass Lab extract cartilage cells called chondrocytes and bathe them for about 10 days in proteins and nutrients to grow more. Now, over two days, the techs then seed millions of uh, chondro chondrocytes into a sheet of biodegradable collagen and creating a living mesh scaffold a little more than an inch across and about two inches high. Now a doctor cuts the scaffold down to size of the damage in the patient's knee and through a small incision inserts it back into the knee to cover the damage. It's glued in place, making stitches unnecessary, and the whole process is called matrix-induced auto... auto... okay, yeah, M-A-C-I. <laughs> or, yeah, M-A-C-I, but it's pronounced... oh, Macy, like Stacy. Day. Now, the cells grow slowly through the collagen membrane, which dissolves harmlessly. Then they migrate through the damaged cartilage to the bone. There they adhere and spur cartilage production, gradually filling in the gaps and resulting in less pain and better knee function. It's like filling a pothole in the road, says the chief executive officer, Nick Collagello. Hmm... Now, complicated as all that may sound, it's a breeze compared to the traditional operations, which, yeah, I know people that have done the traditional stuff, which are much more invasive and complex. And for some patients, it's much more effective than the use of cortisone and pills, which I would never do either. Now, Macy, approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration in December of 2016, is a tantalizing possibility for the growing population of even weekend athletes wobbling around with damaged cartilage. Vericell says that the number of U.S. surgeons trained in the procedure will top 900 by the end of this year and close to double the 2017 figure. So I think you'll see wider adoption of this technique since it's very straightforward, said Christopher Jones, who is an orthopedic surgeon at the University of California at Los Angeles. And he's an expert in cartilage repair. Now, Macy is part of a, broad, a broader boom in tissue engineering and the use of advanced cell therapies to grow parts of organs and other anatomy. The approach has already been used to rebuild damaged trachea and blood vessels, and researchers are developing it to repair chronic wounds and treat spinal cord injuries as well, which, you know, stem cells can also be done with that. But, ooh, who's the biggest harvester of stem cells these days? Can you say Planned Parenthood? I think you can. Now, the cartilage scaffold has quickly become the flagship product for Vericell, known until uh, 2017 or 2014 as Astrum Biosciences Inc. But since Macy's FDA approval, Vericell has reported five consecutive quarters of record sales. And it's, it expects the 2018 revenue to be more than $80 million. That's up so, from $64 million last year. That's still not as much as what Parabol is up to. Or did it go out too? I have no idea. About 10,000 to 15,000 U.S. patients a year qualify for the procedure, creating a potential market for Vericell of 700 million a year. Holy carp. Now, as those numbers suggest, Macy isn't cheap. The scaffold alone costs $40,000. Holy shite. And because procedure is so new, securing insurance coverage can be difficult. It also doesn't work for everybody with cartilage damage. 
the 27 million Americans with the inflammatory condition osteoarthritis need to stick with traditional treatments. But for under 55s who don't want to think about knee replacement just yet, it's worth it, says Manino. So, I'm too young, she says, to not be able to walk up and down the stairs. Well, I am too, sweetheart, but you know what? I'm past that I can't drive 55 marker. So, mm, and I'm doing the natural path. So, um, when, <clears throat> oh, Windows 2000 was your favorite? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I just slurped coffee on my lap. <laughs> just a little. Okay. Um,. Okay. Yeah, Emmy was not cool. Okay, Grimmy says Windows ME was the worst. Well, yeah. But, you know, I didn't mess with that one for very long either, so, yeah. Okay. Bloomberg, are you a robot? No, I am not a robot. I don't have any kind of implants whatsoever. <laughs> okay, we'll do this one. This is kind of interesting, although I do think we need to be looking at people's stem cells and, you know, feeding your body what you need to feed it in order for it to produce more stem cells to repair itself. Hey, what a novel idea. Feed your body what it needs to fix itself. So, oh, and there it goes. Mm-hmm. Dun dun dun. We'll do that one too. Okay. Now, dang, time flies. It really, really does. When you put, you know, when you throw the alarm clock. <laughs> okay. Are allergies the scourge of modern life? No, allergies are the symptom of the scourge on modern life. Um, ooh, here we go. I like this one. Well, okay, I like the headline. I don't do diet anything. I just don't. Because the word diet has die in it. And uh, no, I'm just not going there. I mean, I have gone on diets before, but now if I'm hungry for it and I have access to it, then I, I have that. But if I don't have access for it, then I just have a hankering for it until I get a chance to get it. Other than that, mm, I don't do diet. So, from the inquisitor.com, Diet Coke causes toxic gut bacteria through artificial sweeteners. That's according to a new study. Why does that not surprise me? So, if you think Diet Coke is the lesser of two weevils or evils um, compared to the regular one, then you might have to think again. A new study published in the journal Molecules revealed that artificial sweeteners like aspartame found in Coke can be toxic to gut bacteria. Now, research at Ben Gurion University in in the Negev or of the Negev in Israel and Nanyang University. Uh, Technological University in Singapore have found that sugar substitutes hamper the growth of bacteria living in our guts. Now, the study used genetically modified E. coli to test common sugar substitutes available, like aspartame, sucralose, saccharine, saccharin, and three others. What are the three others? All of which were approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. So, see, just because it's approved by them doesn't necessarily mean it's good for you. Now, the sample was designed to contain fluorescent compounds that glow should there be toxins detected. <clears throat> Excuse me. And after, um, 
Dosing hundreds of times, the researchers found that the artificial sweeteners had a stressing effect on the gut bacteria and it thwarts its ability to grow and reproduce. So my recommendation is to not use artificial sweeteners, says researcher Ariel Kush Kushmaro um, from the Nanyang Techno Technological University. Now, although Kushmaro and his colleagues found that sugar substitutes intoxicate gut bacteria, they recommend further studies since they are uncertain how to ulti or how it ultimately affects humans. We're not claiming that it's toxic to human beings. We're claiming that it might be toxic to the gut bacteria. And by that, will influence us, which if it's toxic to the gut bacteria, you have no, if you stop to think about it and, and did a little research and found out <clears throat> how many bacteria, you know, actually you're just a walking, talking host for a uh, universe of bacteria when you really look at it. So, yeah. Now, um, let's see. Here is a post that was shared by Diet Coke on January, yada, 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 yada. Apparently, the human microbiome, which houses different bacteria in our guts, is said to be the key to overall health. Each one of us has a different variation of the microbiome, which explains why people react differently to specific food or drink. The gut bacteria also affect our immune system as it teaches what pathogens should be tolerated or not. Now, researchers have long tried to find out the side effects of sugar substitutes, and currently, over 200,000, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, over 200,000 researchers have been, or researches have been conducted to analyze its consequence on human health. Now, aside from its negative effect on gut bacteria, it's known that artificial sweeteners may increase the risk of cancer. According to the National Center for Biotechnology Information, previous research found that sugar substitutes can cause brain tumors and bladder cancer. Artificial sweeteners also increase the risk of obesity, diabetes, stroke, and high blood pressure. So while sweeteners are frequently marketed as zero-calorie substitutes, it doesn't help in controlling weight gain and can, in fact, have an inverse effect. Artificial sweeteners are found out to uh, trick the brain that we are not satisfied and hence driving us to consume more regular sugar. So, also, you know, when you go and supersize that meal that you just got, getting that mega big Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi or whatever does not negate all of the calories from the supersized cheeseburger and fries. Just saying. I know there's a lot of people that think it does, but no, it don't. So stay away from, stay away from the artificial sweeteners. Those things are just freaking nasty. Nasty, nasty. I have, you know, my brother thought it was funny when uh, my mom used to have saccharin tablets around the house. And uh, whenever she ran out of sugar when she was making Kool-Aid, she would put a couple of saccharin tablets in and I wouldn't drink the Kool-Aid then because it was like, that's just nasty tasting. Well, my brothers told me that <clears throat> this was a little sugar pill and said, here, try it. And I took a bite and I puked all over the kitchen floor. <laughs> Never again. I just don't like artificial sweeteners. They're just plain nasty. Nasty, nasty. So, yeah. Stay away from the artificial sweeteners. If you're going to drink carbonated beverage, just go full tilt and drink the one with sugar in it. I mean, if you're going to do it anyway, stay away from that diet crap. That is just wrong. And while I'm at it, stay away from those low-calorie waters. Really? Diet water. I saw diet water at the grocery store the other day and about shit bricks. Diet water. Are you freaking kidding me? They're just insane. 
I thought water had no calories. Dumbasses. Oh, well. Moving along. Moving along. See? Either at the propaganda trough or the crap cro trough. Either way. Um, dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Uh, I'm checking. Wow, my recommendeds over in my pocket is lots and lots of diet diet stuff. I wonder if they think I save a lot of links on diet. <laughs> I do. Okay. Um, how about what? Okay. This is, ah, uh, man, I'm just scrolling and I'm seeing all kind of stuff. And it's like, where, which, ah, uh, who do I want to, yes. Yeah, I know, Rob. And people buy it. They put it in their carts. And last time I saw someone do that, I said, you do realize water has no calories. <laughs> Why are you buying diet water? Water already has no calories. And you're paying twice as much as, okay. Okay, I got to go to this board panda. Just because it, okay. From boardpanda.com. Apparently a man perfectly explains women's rage today using brutal analogies so that all men can finally understand it. Really? Well, let's see. Author A.R. Moxon has recently invited all men to participate in an exercise of empathy. He reframed women's experience with assault and sexual violence and presented it in a way that most guys should comprehend. Getting kicked in the nuts. Ow. Now, at first it sounds silly, but it doesn't after you read the whole thing. I don't know. It sounds painful to me. Damn it. Now, speaking on the societal macro level, empathy has been largely a one-way street when it comes to the gender dynamics, he says. In my experience, women are more empathic toward men, while men tend to not be particularly empathic toward women. A uh, blanket statement, but blanket statements sometimes do fit, even though, yeah, we're coming up on on uh, changing of the time, so are we going to cut a foot off the blanket and put it on the other end? Never mind, moving along. So put it another way, women have to think about what men are feeling as a matter of survival. Men aren't in a similar situation. And so, if they don't want to, they don't. And, by and large, we don't want to. <laughs> okay, thanks for admitting that, hun. So, when women tell their stories of living with danger and vulnerability and of survival from assault, our first instinct appears to be protect ourselves from personal culpability and accountability. We certainly saw that dynamic play out as the Kavanaugh story developed. Uh, that, okay, that's, that's a bad analogy just because the Kavanaugh story really was just so much bunkum. It triggered all that shit, but yeah. Now, Moxham said in his analogy, like any other, is imperfect. And, oh, well, thank you. And he has received a lot of feedback since he hit sent, both positive and negative. Now, I chose nut kicking because there isn't a man alive that doesn't understand exactly what a nut shot is. And, with very few exceptions, None who would want to see it, who, or who would want it, or seek it out, or go out asking for it. Well, yeah. Most importantly, no man confuses getting kicked in the nuts with sex. It's very clearly violent, even though it involves sex organs. Now, the idea of growing up in a society where getting hoofed in the balls is normalized behavior systematically it tac tacitly allowed or if tacitly allowed by a complicit society 
and frequently confused with a pleasurable act like sex would rightfully be worrying to any guy. Well, yeah, okay, I get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if it was acceptable to just go up and nut somebody. Wow, okay, that's not acceptable behavior, by the way. And he couldn't have come up with it at a better time. Now, as Judge Brett Kavanaugh has just been confirmed to the U.S. Supreme Court, the world has been hit by a huge wave of anger and protest highlighting the problem that surrounds sexual abuse and assault. I can't imagine women's rage today, Moxon wrote, but this exercise, while abstract, helped me to get nearer to it than I'd been. And he couldn't have come up with it at a better... Oh, okay, you just repeated that. So, the Kavanaugh confirmation proves once again that one of the primary drivers of our society right now is normalized abuse and enablement of abuse. In such a society, the telling of wrong is itself seen as the wrong. It's unutterably sad. It's why the country has a bully with the mind of a cruel child as president, supported by power and cheered by crowds. Okay, I don't necessarily agree with his, but yeah, go for it, ton. I don't, he's a loud mouth. He's a loud mouth. That's about what I would call Trumple. In any case, um... I think you can see that if you want to, that there is a powerful political party that doesn't care about women at all and thinks not caring is good. I dare, I dare hope that more of us see this more clearly than we did before. Now, I agree with him that there is a powerful political party that doesn't care about women at all. It's a political party. That's pretty much all you have to say. There are, there's a powerful political party going on. And, yeah. It doesn't make a damn bit of difference if you've got an R by your name, or a D by your name, or an L by your name, or an I by your name. Odds are, they really don't care. All they care about is votes. And they will use whatever they can to get you to vote for them. You can't tell me that the demon craps gave one shit about the ladies that they produced. <clears throat> Excuse me, shall we say, to um, testify. You can't tell me that they cared about them. If they did, they wouldn't have dropped them like a hot potato as soon as the confirmation was done. It was all a smokescreen all just a play acting thing and everybody got their butts in an uproar over it i agree rob works they don't care about anyone yeah well and that was pretty obvious because they were playing the genders against each other you big meanie poo poo head you just don't care to me that whole damn thing did if it did nothing else it made it even worse for a woman or a man who actually has been abused or assaulted to come forward. It made it harder for anyone to come forward that has actually gone through that because they saw the feeding frenzy that went on about that one. And they don't want to... That's like going through the whole damn thing all over again on steroids. It's, it's insane. And that's all they accomplished. And I really think that's part of what they were trying to accomplish. Normalize it. Make it to where people just go, oh, ho, hum, the whole cry wolf syndrome thing. And then that way, they can continue with, you know, making pedophilia more acceptable. Because, well, you know, I'm just attracted to people of a certain age and love is love okay you're confusing love with a sex with a physical act that is a sexual act that is an act for procreation 
and you're confusing someone saying yes when they're like five years old or seven years old with someone consenting. Yeah, it's no. There's a big, 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 big difference. And I know there are people out there that think, oh, but they said yes. Well, you know what? Children whine, you know, for the most part, look at as adults as authority figures. That's part of being a child. And uh, yeah, when you abuse that, because children, for the most part, will be trusting individuals until you totally ruin that trust by doing disgusting things like that. So, hmm. I don't necessarily agree with, but I, I do think that, yeah, there are some men out there that probably need to have that. So how would you like it to get kicked in the nuts and then to have everybody go, oh, well, that didn't hurt. Shut up, big whiny. So, yeah, that analogy is just, yeah. Yes, Rob works. They are working off of their baser instincts. They are not working out of any kind of love equation. That's not love. Okay. I need to move along. I need to move along. But I did like that one. Didn't necessarily agree with it, but I liked it. Okay. Um... Wow. This is from shanghai.ist. Check this shit out. Saturday, October the 27th, because, you know, they're across the international date line, don't you know? Chao Yun Fat lives on just $100 a month and will leave entire $714 million fortune to charity. Cool. Showing once again why he's the most down-to-earth movie star around, Hong Kong film legend Chow Young Fat reportedly lives on just uh, $102 a month, saving up his money so that one day he can leave it all to charity. Chow's wife, Jasmine Tan, says that her husband manages to live so frugally in one of the world's most expensive cities by frequenting street food stalls and rarely buying new things. That's according to the Oriental Daily Report from last week. Now, for example, for 17 years, Chow stuck with his trusty uh, Nokia flip phone, only recently purchasing a new smartphone when his old device finally stopped working. The 63-year-old Chow is often seen riding public transportation where he rocks a simple wardrobe, a shirt costing him 98 won or 41 doll or 41 pff, 14 dyslexia much um, and sandals costing another 15 won or yan which is two dollars and when asked why he likes to shop at discount shops despite his tremendous net worth he replies I don't wear clothes for other people I just wear whatever I find comfortable which I get that now, last week, while in Taiwan promoting his latest film, Project Gutenberg, Chow was spotted riding the Taupei MRT and taking a jog at the uh, Da'an Forest Park and running on the city's Yangmingshan. Cool. And getting his lots of selfies with a whole bunch of other people. So when he's not exercising, cleaning up the streets of Hong Kong after a typhoon, or lining up for tickets to see his own movie, Chow spends his free time doing charity work. Chow and his wife have no children, and he said that when he dies, he will donate his entire fortune to charity. I feel that the money does not really belong to me. I am just in charge of keeping it temporarily. He said that back in 2014, and his wealth is currently estimated at a whopping $714 million. And you know, there are, there are people out there that are very, as we would put it, well-to-do, 
that are not Captain Assholios. So. Um. Oh, what was that, Frumpy? Frumpy said, um, hard sell on the soft sell now. They're moving up to more Main Street type arrests, and these folks want it off the criminal books before the numbers is up. Ooh. Hmm. Thanks, Frumpy. Okay. Put this one over here, and it's just about time for me to go and check out the pig. What are those piggish fellers up to today? Dun dun dun. Okay, one more. I gotta do one more. Yeah, we'll do that one. So, dun dun dun. Then I need to go to some sites that I haven't been to for a while, just because. Just because. So the word of the day over here on the pig is gridlock. It's a noun. It's an unintended consequence of modern highway systems. It occurs when a large group of motorists with different destinations arrive at the same place at the same time and end up going to the same place nowhere. Yeah, which is why I stay away from big cities. In the quotable quotes section, no one with a day's experience in government fails to realize that in all bureaucracies there are three impact or implacable spirits self perpetuation, expansion, and incessant demand for more power. That is from Herbert Hoover. And that is the truth. In the Tasty Tidbits section, the lessons we learn from horror films. Number one, when you hear the creepy music, don't open the fucking door. Jeez, how many times do I have to yell that at him? Now, when it appears that you have killed the monster, never to check to see if it's really dead, because it isn't. If you find that your house is built upon or near a cemetery was once a church that was used for black masses, had previous inhabitants who went mad or committed suicide or died in some horrible fashion, or had inhabitants who performed satanic practices in your house, move immediately. Um, how about this one? Never read a book of demons summoning aloud, even as a joke. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't do it. Don't. Um... Do not search the basement, especially if the power has just gone out. Yeah, don't go there. It's a dark place, and there's creepy music playing. How about this one? If your children speak to you in Latin or any other language which they should not know, or if they speak to you using a voice other than their own, shoot them immediately. It will save you a lot of grief in the long run. Note, it will probably take several rounds to kill them, so be prepared. <laughs> Well, I don't know that I would go quite that far, but mm. uh, how about this one? When you have the benefit of a group of people, never pair off and go it alone. Hmm. Also, as a general rule, don't solve puzzles that open portals to hell. Yeah, don't do that. Don't. That's not. Yeah. You know, that's like walking into a voting booth. You just opened a portal to hell. Um, if you're searching for something that caused a noise and find out that it's just the cat, leave the room immediately if you value your life. Yes, because cats are precursors to that kind of stuff. <laughs> They're dangerous little buggers. Um, if you find a town that looks deserted, it's probably for a reason. Take a hint and leave now. Hey, here's another one. Don't fool with recombinant DNA technology unless you're sure you know what you're doing. And even then, don't do it. Now, these are all things that, that this author has learned from scary movies. Um, 
If you're running from the monster, expect to trip or fall down at least twice. More if you are of a female persuasion. Now, even though you may be faster than the monster, you can be sure that it will catch you. So really, why bother? I don't run. I just don't. It's not pretty. And I do fall down because I'm a girl. <laughs> um, if your friends suddenly begin to exhibit uncharacteristic behavior such as hissing or a fascination for blood or glowing eyes or increasing hairiness, you know, or whatever, get away from them as fast as possible. That's not your friend anymore. How about this one? Stay away from certain geographical locations, some of which are listed here, you know, like Amityville and Elm Street, which I grew up on Elm Street. That should clue you in on something right there. Transylvania, um, Mescatonic University. Ooh, Camp Crystal Lake. Never thought about going there. Don't really plan on it. Haddonfield, Illinois, or that one gas station desert towns or any small town in Maine. Yeah, because, well, Stephen King's from Maine. So, yeah, pretty much says it all. If your car runs out of gas at night, do not go to the nearby des de <clears throat> deserted looking house to phone for help. Yeah, because there's a creepy guy in there. And you'll hear weird music even when your car has run out of gas. You will. Seriously. Out in the open. Also, beware of strangers bearing tools such as chainsaws, staple guns, hedge trimmers, electric carving knives, combines, lawn mowers, butane torches, soldering irons, or band saws. This is especially true if they are wearing a hockey mask or one made of human skin. So see, those are all very valuable lessons that you can take from horror movies and put to work in your real life. There you go. So, moving along. Down to this date in history, they only got two things here. Damn it. Okay. Um... The 26th of October, 1787, Hamilton, Madison, and Jay publish essential prose on the U.S. Constitution, the Federalist Papers. Congress should be required to read it daily. I'll bet most of them wouldn't anyway. And lastly, this date in history, the 26th of October, 1901, a new tool makes its gala debut in Paris when the gateway or getaway car is used for the first time after some surrender monkey desperados hold up a shop. Huh, very interesting. Okay, and their uh, top story... Huh, is their Halloween top story? Oh, let's go with it, because you know what? Next week they'll have a new top story, and I won't be able to read it. So here we go. See if I can get through this. Once Upon a Midnight Dreary. Hmm. This year, the ghosts, goblins, and ghouls at the Free State of Pig plan to rip the mask off the most egregiously maligned holiday on the world's calendar. Halloween. Why? Because it's the kind of thing that we do. And also, here in the pig bunker, Halloween is one of our favorite days of the year. For a number of reasons. First and foremost, it's a day when kids are allowed to unleash their imaginations, something that is increasingly deplorably rare in these nanny state plagued times. And Halloween is about fun. It's a day when rational adults get to experience unmitigated tyke excitement joy, and laughter. It's all that and more. It would be nice for once, just once, if all the whiners, hand ringers, and other killjoys would shut the hell up and let kids have some harmless, let's pretend fun. Now, since they won't cooperate, we're determined to mount a vigorous defense on its behalf. And in the process, we'll hit all the hot buttons that we can find. <clears throat> giving you a heads up on the good, the bad, and the ugly aspects of Halloween. So, we'll begin with this piggish Halloween primer 
by telling you what Halloween is. Halloween started out as an ancient Celtic festival, Samhan. It's a day which marked the end of the lighter half of the year and the beginning of the darker half of the year. Since it's a significant moment in the Celtic calendar, it's also known as Celtic New Year. Now, many of our Halloween traditions can be traced back to Samhan, uh, including wearing of costumes. Believing the barrier between the afterlife and this world was especially thin on this day, the Celts welcomed the spirits of dearly departed family members, but warded off harmful spirits by wearing scary costumes. The use of skeletons on Halloween also traces back to Samhan, uh, since families would deploy them in the windowsill to make friendly spirits feel welcome. Other elements like the term Jack O'Lantern or originating in Ireland and the carved pumpkin, an American contribution, were added later. In the 21st century, Halloween is what it has been all our lives. A day when children of all ages dress up and set forth on a candy-mugging quest. On Halloween, costume-wearing tykes will roam your neighborhood seeking all those sugary treats that make mom act snarky when they ask her for, you know, just a piece or two. So cut little Moonbeam and Thunderboy some slack, mom. Yeah, we know you'll be forced to deal with that high-energy, nerve-shattering sugar high and the request of mommy, my, t or yeah, the requisite, excuse me. Mommy, my tummy feels funny after math, but the free state of pig is confident that you'll survive, as usual. And it's only once a year, and it's a small price to pay for those tykes high spirits. Now that you're up to speed on what Halloween is, it's time to cut through the crap and tell you what it isn't. We're painfully aware that some of our loyal pigsters view this annual candy-intensive holiday with foreboding. Too many individuals see dark forces at work behind this night of make-believe, and that's a shame. In a perfect world, you'd figure out that if you raised your tykes with the proper values, then one night in a Dracula cape with plastic fangs isn't going to turn your tyke into a virgin-sacrificing devil worshiper. It's not going to happen, so lighten up and let the kids play dress-up and have some good, clean, classically American fun. Now, the most pernicious canard about Halloween is that pagans, Satanists, and Wiccans stole it from the cross cult. It's a popular whopper that deliberately abuses historic fact. The fact that Halloween, formerly All Hallows' Eve, occurs on the eve of the cross cult's All Saints' Day is, as you might expect, no accident. But the perpetrators aren't pagans. The perpetrators are Vatican players, Pope Gregory III and Pope Gregory IV, who deliberately tried to co-opt this pagan festival by moving All Saints Day from May 13th to November 1st. By the mid-800s, the deed was done, and the assault on Halloween was going full speed ahead. Wiccans and other Johnny-come-lately asshats have belatedly tried to horn in to do some holiday co-opting of their own, with mixed results. They're free to do whatever thrills them spitless, but the fact remains that Halloween isn't about them either. Now, over the years, a strange coalition of thin-skinned pumpkin heads joined forces to malign Halloween. But, by and large, the holiday took a licking but kept on ticking. And that brings us to the next topic of our Halloween or our piggish Halloween primer agenda. The ever popular list of suspects who get heartburn from our favorite holiday of the year. Many true believers whine that Halloween is satanic, demonic, and spreads a vile form of supernaturalism by lurking unsuspecting types in or by luring them into the dark side with candy and other tasty treats. Marxist meatheads blubber that Halloween is just another excuse for dastardly capitalists to pick the pockets of unsuspecting consumers. 
Wiccans interrupt their howling at the moon to complain that seeing Moonbeam uh, packing a broom, donning her witch's garb, and sporting a hooked nose gives them a boo-boo. It's demeaning and qualifies in their fevered brains as hate speech. So-called child advocates blither that the scary Fright Night aspects of Halloween might scar little Thunderboy and Moonbeam for life. They bellow that it's blatant, unacceptable, unnecessary assault on fragile tyke psyches. On the one night that really is for the children, these child advocate bedwetters insist that mom and dad, oops, uh, parent one and parent two, keep the tykes at home. While they want to teach your child in school, starting to in kindergarten, the joys of homosexual and transgender relations. Now, anal retentive prudes complain that the costumes worn by Moonbeam and her wenchlet pals are egregiously skimpy and make them look like brazen hussies. In this category, the sex Ebola nurse costume has tongues wagging. One Halloween, a Minnesota woman incurred the wrath of assorted asshats because the mock graveyard in her front yard had boo-boo-inducing prose on the tombstones with names like Mike Hunt, Ben Dover, Phil McCracken, <laughs> Hugh Jass, and she's our kind of gal, and the woman told the whiners to bite me. Which, go, girlfriend. I like that one. I'd never heard Phil McCracken. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. <laughs> um, it's a slam dunk that cowboys, engines, sombrero stompers, and Islamikazis are high on any slash all lists of costume no-nos. And you can bet the proverbial agricultural endeavor that our founding fathers, Johnny Reb, anything deemed egregiously white, plus any costume depicting a cop, etc., are vilified as offensive. Now, once again, Halloween season spreads confusion far and wide. Some people, we'll call them eager beavers, are just naturally horrifying, ghoulish, or ghastly. So they appear to be in costume 365 days a year. San Fran Nan comes to mind on that one. And some of you will attribute this piggish notion to your notoriously colorful nature. Well, sticks and stones. So here are a few eager beavers that we the pigs have encountered. Oh, and now, yay, here we go. Sideshow Bruce takes us scary to horror-inducing levels every day of the year. Yeah. George Soros gave real Americans a thrill by paying south-of-the-border hooligans to invade the U.S. The jackass party ghouls prowl graveyards, adding room-temperature patriots to the voting rolls. Ah, and my favorite, San Fran Nan Pelosi spent the entire year scaring the snot out of tykes with her hurricane-proof, Botox-induced fright mask. Next, there's the zombie, one of the walking dead, who has been spotted out in public this week. It's Kanye West, who seems more bummed than ever now that he owns short and porny a.k.a. the Kim porn star Kardashian. You're dead meat, dude, because your fat-ass American apple didn't fall far from the relentless, greedy, big mama Kardashian tree. It's his self-made hell, so he burns in it. Well, sorry, Kanye. <clears throat> but yeah, you married her. When we spotted a giant sphincter being interviewed by the MSM to, uh, toady, we wondered who was road testing his, her, his, her, or its Justin Bieber costume. Silly us, it turned out to be Chucky Schumer, who is always a complete asshole in his natural state. And every time we spot a scrawny skank wearing short shorts, plus a flimsy top humping a lamppost, it makes us stop short and ask ourselves, is this a garden variety crack whore or someone in a Miley Cyrus costume? These boys are in rare form tonight. 
And if you spot a terrifying crone in a pantsuit chasing someone in a beaver suit, don't panic. It's this year's Shrillery and Huma costume set. <laughs> Now, last weekend, I was knocking back a few at a friend's house when a mutt ran up and started humping my leg. Smirking, I looked at the mutt, then my friend. Looks like Bubba, the dog, is wearing a Chris Matthews costume again this year. And the mutt is in his Matthews mode every day. Now, the eager beavers are, by and large, more amusing than annoying. And the costume banning candle pissers are a different story. If there's a dark underbelly to Halloween, it's all about human nature, not demonic influences. It works this way. Painfully aware that daughter Moonbeam's sudden burning need for an iPhone traces back to the fact that Moonbeam's best friend Susie just got one from her indulgent mommy. Moonbeam's mom plots her revenge. When little Susie shows up dressed as the princess in some kid flick, Moonbeam's mom reaches for the special Susie treat, a 10,000 calorie candy bar that will put Susie's cholesterol into orbit and give her a sugar high that will make her hyperactive for the next three weeks. It's not a perfect revenge, but it's damn close. Susie will survive unscathed, and the jury is still out on her mom's fate. So if you expect to survive Halloween, we have some piggish rules of engagement that must be memorized. Number one, don't dress up as a Catholic priest if you're assigned to candy wrangling duty on Halloween night. Yeah. Number two, don't eat the candy corn. It's vile stuff that predates the primordial ooze which spawned the first self-perpetuating organism. I like candy corn. <laughs> I don't eat it very often, but I do like candy corn. Number three, don't let yourself be tempted by that foxy this close to the street legal wenchlet in the skimpy outfit. She's jailbait and thus off limits. Young enough to be your granddaughter, Sparky. Number four, don't be afraid of the crazy guy who jumps out and scares you, piglets. Spike swears that he's out, that he's got the best candy in the neighborhood. Number five, don't let the paranoid ravings of caterwauling cretins spoil one of the great kid-friendly days of the whole year. Number six, don't forget to take some kind of light with you, piglets, to make it easy for drivers to see you. And finally, number seven, don't forget to have a piggishly good time, pigsters and piglets, because Halloween is the best damn day of the entire year. So it's time to wrap this one up so you can fortify your homestead for the forthcoming candy mugging assault. Halloween is a night for and about children. It's a night when tykes delight us by dressing up and channeling their inner thespian. It's one moment in the year when we can become anyone, anything, our heart's desire, and the only limiting factors are our own imaginations. If that gives holy rollers, food Nazis, correctniks, Wiccans, and the assorted other asshats a painful dose of Halloween heartburn, tell somebody who cares. It's time for rational adults to face the fetid fact that a fun day like Halloween will never register with humorless, myopic, girly men. It's time for us to ignore these hair-incinerating, panty-wadding pinheads because they can't or won't grasp the concept of a day devoted to fun, sometimes at the expense of others. It's time for rational adults to tell these Halloween killjoys to put a sock in it, because we refuse to give credence to the entirely mythical right not to be offended, <clears throat> and we won't be enslaved to someone's irrational sensitivities. If someone has trouble with ghosts, goblins, witches, and all the rest, it's their personal problem. On Halloween night, the top secret free state of pig bunker will welcome tykes of all ages. That's right, pigsters. We'll channel our inner Tom Baudet and keep the light on for you. 
Well, thank you, Hambo or Porcus. Usually it's Hambo that writes that, but every once in a while, Porcus does. That, to me, sounded an awful lot like Hambo, but I like that one. I really like that one. And just for that, I'm going to go ahead and share the link to the pig over here so y'all can check it out for yourself. So... Um, what's that? Uh, okay. Beetle! I see you, Beetle! Oh, uh, you know, parents really need to, if they don't want their children dressing up like, um, street walkers, parents need to put their foot down and be parents. You know, it's because it's called adulting and they are children and there are weirdos out there. And I will add to this, you know, if you've got little ones, go out trick or treating with them. It really is fun to do that. I've done that with my kids and I did it with my grandkids and it really was a lot of fun. And it's amazing all of the different costumes that kids come up with. And out here in the boonies, a lot of the kids make their own. You know, they, they go to the, the thrift stores and the second time around stores and they buy stuff and they throw stuff together and they really are pretty inventive little critters. It's fun. I know when we were growing up, we did not get to buy costumes. We had to make our own and by golly, we had a lot of fun. And I still have some of those costumes. Just because. So... This coming Halloween, please remember that it's not, it's not everything that everybody else is saying, you know, oh, it's demonic, it's this. That is what someone is projecting onto it. This is a time when everyone can have a little fun with some make-believe. And just be careful, because there are idiots and assholes out there. So, pay attention to your youngins. And have fun with the kiddos. And don't let anybody spoil it for them. Hi, Cowboy Tech. Oh. Why, thank you, Grimner. You're so awesome. Yeah, because I rarely, I, yeah, I just don't, I don't think to put the pig on there, but I should. I should. Because, you know, Hambo, thank you, Grim, for letting me know. <laughs> now I can make sure I put it on the on the Spreaker one, too. Because, yeah, they need a shout-out. Because those guys are, they're, they're goofballs. Oh, well. Um, from what I understand from the chats earlier today, Art Underground is no longer with us. Not because he is passed on or anything. He's just not playing anymore. He's taken his game and gone home fine you know I mean that's his choice his option I don't know what happened I don't know that I really need to know what happened but so no more art underground or um <laughs> here we go brain farts see now I can't even remember what the heck his show was called I'll look on the schedule because Grim said he left it there uh, straight talk 101. Yeah. So, and no more rock and renegade either. So, it's sad, but mm, it happens. You know, people make life choices all the time. I understand. Okay, so, since it is a Freaker Friday, be sure to stick around because later, Grimner and Moose Girl will be on with the Freaker's Ball. Is this going to be your Halloween Freaker's Ball, Grimmy? Seen as how Halloween is next Wednesday, <laughs> I get to broadcast on Halloween. Yay! I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm going to have to find some Halloween-y kind of stuff just to just for the hell of it. Um, but I'm hoping this is your Halloween-y. Halloween <laughs> Moving along. Your Halloween show tonight. That would be fun. I can't stay up and listen because I do have to work in the morning. But... I will have to listen to the later, later. Um, also, tomorrow at noon Eastern time, 
Flash Rooney Dork is going to be on with the Dork Table here on the RLM. On Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimner is going to be cranking out the blues here on RLM. And there's probably going to be a rousing game of trivia going on in the chat. I can't wait. I don't know that I'll be around, but if I am, I will be at least putting answers in like 10 or 15 seconds late. <laughs> Just because I can. Um, let's see. Oh, it's a Halloween Freakers. Yay, Grim. Yay. How awesome is that? Okay, uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. Directly following Grim on Sunday will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop ass on Yo Ass. And you never know, he might jump out from behind the woodshed and give you a good scare, seeing as how Halloween's coming up. I will be back on um, next week, Wednesday, on All Hallows Eve, Halloween, Halloween, with the spooktacular rocket chair, or probably just another rocket chair, but I'll try and find a bunch of Halloween stuff. <laughs> That's pretty much the extent of it. Also, next week, Tuesday, in a perfect wild with Flasher. And Rob, are you doing that with Flash now, or are you just kind of every once in a while doing that? Because I know it was Flash and Vinny, but now Vinny has, Vinny's doing his own thing, making choices. So, just checking to make sure, since I got a few minutes left here. Um, dun, 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 dun. Let me see where else I can go. I know there's lots of people that tell me where to go, but most of the time I tell them you first. <laughs> um, oh, let's check out Fark, shall we? I haven't been to the Fark in a long time. And seeing as how Freaker Friday is my favoritest F word. Well, not really favoritest, but I cleanest one, I can say. Um, <laughs> Fark is right up there as well. Uh, dun, dun. Let's see what they got. In the scary, no, I don't want to do, what, bras and panties and dog x-rays? Oh, <laughs> Okay, we'll go here. We'll go here just because, yeah, I know dogs do that. Um, the strange things that dogs eat and the risks to their health. Now, yeah, I know it is a it is scary when they do this shit, but yeah. This is from KIRO7.com. Uh, every pet owner has a story of something that their dog or cat ate that they shouldn't. But in certain cases, that item can be deadly because of its size or ingredients. You know, take the senior dog Ruby, who met an urban animal, or we met at Urban Animal in downtown Seattle, and owner Carrie Schott checked off the list of random items that Ruby had ingested over the years. A bikini, socks, underwear, bras, sometimes all of those things at once. And in the beginning of this year, there were two surgeries within three months of each other. Ruby's most recent surgery was to remove a sweatshirt. Good God, Ruby. Now, veterinarian Sherry uh, Trushemi says that dogs like Ruby aren't so uncommon. I've seen a dog, a good-sized dog, eat an entire comforter. Holy crap! Bang! Now, often it will take an x-ray to figure out what the dog got into. And she showed the news team one x-ray in which you can see the outline of a plastic King Kong toy that a dog swallowed whole. Now, she has also seen broken off bully sticks lodged in the esophagus and tags meant, that, uh, meant for the collar ending up in the stomach. Oh, doggies, doggies. See, dogs will eat anything anything it's disgusting you know kind of like people and all of this crap going on with these bombers and the guy and all the stickers on his windows people will swallow anything sometimes you just gotta smack them upside the head from time to time tell them don't go there don't swallow that in any case um oh he wasn't happy with all the anarchists here oh well okay Sorry. And yay! Rob Works will be on with Flash on Tuesday. Awesome sauce. 
Okay, well, I guess that's the end of my time. So thank you all for listening in to the Rocket Chair on this Freaker Friday, the Friday before Halloween. I will be back on Halloween to entertain you or piss you off, however it the case may be. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to do my thing. But until then, have an absolutely amazing weekend, and I will catch up with you in the funny papers or on the flip side, whichever comes first. But until then, please remember, I truly do love you all, and I wish you all enough. Good night.